Hi, I'm Cheryl Kagan, very proud to be the Senator for Rockville and Gaithersburg. Welcome to this episode of Kibitzing with Kagan with the gubernatorial candidates for Maryland's next governor. With me today is Michael Rosenbaum. I'm really delighted that you were able to take time to join me today to chat. Mike, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So I start everybody off with 60 seconds on kind of who you are, your background, and why you're running. Why don't you go ahead and begin? Great, thank you. So I've lived in Maryland pretty much my whole life. I grew up in Montgomery County and I lived in Baltimore City most of my adult life. And what I've done is start and grow companies in Maryland that create pathways for each person to find economic security. I started by doing that with a company that focuses on helping folks into the tech industry. The second company helps folks into the healthcare industry and deals with systemic bias that prevents that. Um, but now coming out of COVID, we have a unique opportunity to build an economy and a state that provides pathways of economic security for everyone. And that's why I'm running. That's great. Okay, very succinct. So I have a bunch of different categories and we'll plow through them. Uh, the goal in this conversation is helping people get to know a little bit more about you, not just your position on various issues. So we're gonna start with your childhood, which you just referenced. And my first question was where you grew up. So you've already referenced that. Um, did you have siblings and where are you in the birth order? I'm a older sibling and I have a younger brother who's three and a half years younger than me. Okay, did you have pets growing up? I did. I had a Cocker Spaniel named Midnight, and I had a cat named Rumple Teaser. Named? Rumple Teaser. Aw, okay. Were you a good student when you were growing up? I was a good student when I was growing up. I was, a, not only was I a good student, I was the nerdiest nerdy kid you ever met. All right. Um, who was your favorite teacher and why? Who is my favorite teacher and why? That is hard. Um, I would have to say when I was growing up, one of my favorite teachers was Mrs. Ide, um, although I had a bunch of favorite teachers, but perhaps my favorite favorite teacher is my teacher from later who actually was the reason I became an entrepreneur. And her name is Martha Minow. And she was originally gonna help me. I was a fellow and I was gonna become an assistant professor. And she was the person who said, I don't think you wanna do this. I think you should go be an entrepreneur and go start the nonprofit organization that you're talking about starting. And it was because she encouraged me to do that that I moved to Baltimore and started a nonprofit organization. Fantastic. What was your favorite television show as a kid? Oh, as a kid, hmm. I think it was something like, I can't remember the exact name, Emergency 911 or something like that. Because um, there were two characters in that, and they were named Roy and John. And I ended up naming, naming two gerbils, Roy and John, until one gerbil sadly passed away because a friend of mine did not treat the gerbil well while playing. Uh oh. Uh, yeah, not, not good. Um, not a good story. So, yeah, but, but, I was so inspired by that show that I did name the two triples Roy and John. What was the cute guy's name? It was like Randy Mantooth or Mantooth. Something like that, yeah. So I know I'm totally dating myself by, by identifying this show, but. Yeah, you're good. Um, <laughs> when you were a kid, what was your earliest fantasy of what you might want to be when you grow up, your career? Oh, there were so many of them, um, you know. There was a point at which I decided I wanted to be a doctor. However, I am terrified of blood and I'm terrified of needles. And when I say I'm terrified of needles, I am really terrified of needles. As in last year, when I went and got my flu shot at the CVS, the person remembered me from the prior year. Oh my. So yeah, so being a doctor was not a good one. Not and there were hard. a variety of other things I decided I was gonna be. At one point I thought I was gonna be a spy. That was not going to work very well because I like to talk too much. Um, so right. talk about getting a vaccine then. I assume you are double vaccinated or vaccinated. I am double vaccinated. Um, so my wife came with me to get double vaccinated because she knew I was going to be scared. Mm -hmm. And when I got the vaccine, the person who gave the vaccine to me turned to my wife and said, I'm really glad you were here. Oh, no. I was really glad she was there too. I hope that she gave you a lollipop or something. Like that. <laughs> right, <exactly. laughs> All right. Who was your mentor when you were young? 
who's my mentor when I was young, I was fortunate to have a bunch of mentors at various stages along the way. Um, and really without those mentors, I wouldn't have been able to do what I do. Um, you know, I mentioned one mentor earlier who was, you know, th this professor, Martha Minow, and she was a, a mentor for me in, in thinking about um, starting a nonprofit organization. And then when I ended up shutting down the nonprofit and starting a for-profit company, she was one of the folks who actually encouraged me to do that. I was worried that starting a for-profit company would somehow be a failing somehow. Mm -hmm. Um, because I hadn't been able to make the nonprofit succeed. So she helped me with that. And then once I became an entrepreneur, I ended up with a whole bunch of mentors who, you know, who helped me work through, it's really hard to start a business, you know, and thinking about how you do it and what you do first and what you do next and what to be worried about, what not to be worried about. And so, so I was fortunate to have, have many folks help me along the way. That's great. And a bit of a pivot. Tell us about someone that you mentor and how that started. Oh, so I feel so enriched by being able to mentor a whole range of folks who often are entrepreneurs. So as an adult, that's really what I've done a lot of, which is, um, you know, entrepreneurs in Maryland, um, you know, fortunately, there are more and more of us, um, but there aren't many folks who have been doing this as long as I have. And so I'm really fortunate to have many folks who say, you know, could you help me think through this problem? Or, you know, so frequently the issue is actually a personal one, which is like, how do I process this problem emotionally? Mm. That's the hardest part of everything. Right. And so, um, so that, that's the piece that I, most rewarding for me and frankly that I learned the most of from, from getting to meet lots of interesting things. Like that. We're gonna pivot to hobbies. Uh -huh. Tell us uh, your favorite sport either to play or to watch favorite sport to play or to watch? Hmm, that is tricky. So I, this is going to sound a little funky, but I, um, and I'm not sure you would call this a sport. I like to rock climb. Okay, um, that's a sport. Yeah, so that's I know. So, so I like to rock climb. Um, you know, now that I'm a little more middle-aged than I was before, I now do more conventional things. Like I, I, um, I like to run. Um, which again, I, is, you know, clears my head and helps me do sort of a whole range of other things in terms of watching sports. Um, my, uh, so both of my companies were located basically next to, um, Camden Yards and M&T Bank Stadium. Mm -hmm. And so it was very convenient to see, you know, our proud baseball and football teams. Excellent. Excellent. Did you pick up any new hobbies during COVID? Did I pick up any new hobbies during COVID? So I always like to read, um, but I really stepped that up a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and so that I did a bunch more of that. The other piece, which I'm probably not terribly proud of admitting, is I also like to binge watch television. And so- We are so, getting to that actually. <laughs> so oh, I confess to have binge watched shows that I may have even seen before, but, but newly inspired binge watch during COVID. And the, the final piece is I really love to cook. Um, okay, we're getting to that too. Okay, sorry, but I'll, I'll let you yeah, get to the bit. No, so. you're good. You're making my job easier. <laughs> um, so tell us about some of the TV shows that you like to binge, binge watch. Um, so I, mean, I, I do love The Wire. I, I know that not everyone does. I love The Wire. Um, I, uh, I love The Americans. Um, the TV show, um, you know, in part because, you know, I grew up in the 80s and there are more station wagons with fake wood on the side of them in that show. <laughs> we had one of those. I know, we all had them, right? And so I always see that and I love it. And, you know, and it's based in DC and I grew up in, in Bethesda. Right. Um, and I, uh, and also I, I studied Russian when I was a kid. And so there's a bunch of Russian. So I love, I love the Americans. And, um, and I have to confess during COVID, I also, re binge watch The Sopranos. Okay. It's really a fabulous show. So I think I'll probably get kicked out of Maryland for this. I've never once seen any episode of The Wire. And the Oy three- they. I know, the three that you've named, I've not seen one episode of any of them. That's, I know. Well, well the next time you do a kibitz, we're gonna, I'm gonna turn the tables on you and, I, and I'm gonna give you homework. There you go. All right, <laughs> fair enough. Um, I've also never watched Game of Thrones. I mean, I'm just a weirdo on that. I, I know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so other than this podcast, which is obviously your favorite or going to be, um, do you have a favorite podcast, something you'd recommend to our viewers? Um, 
a number of them, I will tell you, this is probably because of what I've done for work. There is a, there's a podcast called Startup um, that's about mm. startups that is really great um, and is about like all of the ups and downs of trying to get something started. And, and it's, about, um, it's about someone who is actually starting a company that's for podcasts. So I love it. That sounds really interesting. <laughs> We're going to pivot, Mike, to the arts. Okay. What is your favorite genre of music? My favorite genre of music. So my favorite genre of music is actually folks who pull different musical traditions together to, to sort of create their own voice. So like Amy Winehouse is one of my favorite, mm -hmm. um, one of my favorite artists. Um, but also uh, when I was a kid, I, um, I, this may sound strange for someone who's, who's running for political office, but I, I felt shy at times and nervous. And so I found performing music and theater to be a way to sort of break out of that. Um, and so, so I spent a bunch of time in high school and in college and later actually performing as well. So I love that sort of the idea of sort of writing your own stuff and performing, so. I love that. What kind of stuff did you write or perform? So um, I confess I was never that good at the writing part. Um, but so in college, I spent a year in a drag show um, that, uh, you know, that was sort of written by folks who went on to do fabulous things that were far above my pay grade. Um, I did a lot of sort of musical theater kinds of things, so. Well, once again, you are, um, you are <laughs> on target here. What are your top five favorite Broadway musicals or up to top five? I, my top five is like eight or nine of them. So top a few five favorite Broadway musicals? Yeah, I used to have a radio show, uh, uh, Curtain Call with Cheryl Kagan. <laughs> when I was in college. So I have a lot of them. Oh, that is so great. Okay, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm gonna totally fail at this. Nah, um, you'll do great. Because I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm gonna totally fail at this. I mean, I'm gonna answer the same way everyone else answers, which is obviously we all love Hamilton, right? Everyone who's politics loves Hamilton. Um, you know, I have a special love of Hamilton in part because I, someone who was a few years behind me and much more talented in the theater program of my high school ended up, um, ended up being in that show and was the person who spoke to uh, Vice President Pence. Wow. Um, so I feel sort of a special connection, but I, but I love, obviously I love that show. Um, other Broadway musicals that I love. Um, I, so I have two uh, teenage daughters, mm -hmm. um, a 14 year old and a 15 year old. And so um, one of them is currently in middle school and one of them is, uh, is uh, entering 10th grade. And so I think probably just because it's been sort of a recent thing, I think Mean Girls is a musical. Yes, Mean Girls, yes. So, okay. so I, I'm a fan of Mean Girls because it, it saved us a bit in middle school um, for my older daughter. Okay. Um, and I'm gonna forget the That's name. okay. If that's, okay. if that's yep. you too, we're, we're good. Okay. Uh, do you have a favorite song that is sort of your anthem that inspires you and lifts you up? Favorite song that's my anthem. I don't, I can't, I can't think of one right that's now. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. What is your favorite arts venue? My favorite arts venue. So um, I, uh, I was on the board of, uh, of the Baltimore Museum of Art. Nice. For 10 years. And I chaired the search committee there that, um, that sort of drove the pivot of that institution to be a platform for underrepresented voices. And so, um, so I would be completely failing if it, I did not identify the Baltimore Museum of Art as a, as a favorite venue. However, um, I do love all of the other arts venues um, because I think one of the big challenges in, you know, in sort of modern society and the way our economies developed um, is, that, is that spaces of creativity and conversation, mm. you know, are harder and harder to maintain in sort of modern society. And so the fact that, we have any at all is, ama is an amazing thing. You know, we need so many more. And so obviously Baltimore is filled with fabulous venues. Maryland is filled with fabulous venues, yeah. but, but I do have to give a special nod to. The to BMA them. is lovely. <laughs> Can you tell us about a book that has had a meaningful impact on your life? A book that's had a meaningful impact on my life. Oh, there's so many. I'm not sure I can, I can identify one. Um, I think I probably started identifying books that I just read. Um, so, 
Yeah, actually, I'll literally identify one right now. I probably have it over here. Um, like, when should law forgive? Which um, is about sort of what is the, you know, how do we think about the deal we all make to live in a civilized society? And, you know, and the law is sort of a punitive tool, um, mm -hmm. you know, compared to forgiveness. And the idea of forgiveness in a society, particularly when we have sort of core, like deep seated issues that require us to move past them and all to, in order to sort of live together. So, sorry, I literally just read it. And so okay. that's just top of mind. Great. Uh, we're going to shift the next category is your personal life, personal story. Uh, what is the biggest risk you've ever taken in your life? The biggest risk that I've ever taken in my life. Um, I'm not sure I would identify, I'm not sure I would identify it as risk, but um, obviously sort of stepping away from sort of academic and policy work and starting a nonprofit organization and then starting companies. Um, some might say is risk. Um, I'm not sure that I perceived it as risk because I'm not sure for myself, I would have been happy doing anything else. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, have you ever broken a bone and how? I have never broken a bone. That's awesome. All right. right? <laughs> what is your favorite tech gadget? And you can't say your phone. My favorite tech gadget. I have to confess, I don't love tech gadgets. Okay. And my kids are totally offended by that. <laughs> uh, They're completely offended by the fact that I have been, folks would describe me as growing tech companies for long periods of time. And, you know, and I think that the personal use of technology frequently can make our lives not as good. Mm. And so I actually sort of shy away from embedding a lot of technology in my life. I have to say that conversation would take up a whole half hour. Wouldn't it? Right? So, Fascinating. Whoa. But we're going to have to move on. Okay. We have to move on. We have nine pages of questions. Yes, exactly. <laughs> we're on page four. Okay. <laughs> um, do you speak any other language or languages other than English? I do. I speak Russian, but I'm very, I'm very rusty. Okay. Zdravstvite. Zdravstvite. Очень приятно. Пожалуйста. Спасибо. <laughs> we are near the end of the question now. Yes. Uh, what was your first car and how old were you? My first car. So when I was high school, my mom let me drive her car. And her car was a diesel Volvo station wagon with 110,000 miles on it. And I think the only channel it played was NPR. That's um, awesome. So, and then I totaled it. Okay. Oh, no. Oh, that's <laughs> bad. Okay. Um, what was your first crush or your first love? My first crush or my first love? My first crush. Or it can be Hollywood or real life or anyone. My first crush was, I was in, a, I went to, a, to like a summer arts program when I was in ninth grade. And there was a girl in that program um, who, who was my first crush. I would tell you my first love, meaning my first real, true, deep love, is my wife, Amy. Yay, <laughs> Amy. Um, tell me uh, what ticks you off the most. What ticks me off the most? Um, I will tell you that I'm not sure ticks off is the right word. Maybe it's the right word. Um, and you're probably going to find this entertaining given sort of the, the industry we are both in. Okay. Um, but when folks don't say what they mean, mm. or folks aren't direct about what they mean, um, I have a hard time with it. And I, you're welcome to mock me now. But I'm not going to mock you because I think <laughs> you and I are not those people, but there are, there are those who are. Yep. Yeah. Uh, tell us something important that you learned from one of your parents. Something important I learned from one of my parents. Um, so my father um, showed me uh, videos of the, uh, of the liberation of the camps in Germany at the end of World War II when I was six. Mm, wow. It was a little early, um, you know, but I'd say sort of the theme of sort of how a society can collapse mm. um, and what each of our obligations is in society to ensure those sorts of things don't happen. 
um, let's say sort of a, you know, a profoundly important message from frankly, both my parents. Wow, okay. Uh, the next category is at home. And these are gonna be quicker questions, quicker answers. What is your favorite junk food? My favorite junk food, Pringles. Okay. What is your least favorite food? Something you just won't eat? Beets. 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 Okay. I just had some tonight, actually. Sorry. Uh, what do you cook really well? I cook really well. I cook, ooh, I cook a few things well. Um, I cook seafood well. I cook steak well. Um, yeah, those two I, I, I do quite well, I think. All right. What is your least favorite household chore? My least favorite household chore, um, it is ironing. Okay. Yeah. Um, God forbid your house is on fire. Other than people and pets, what's something that you would seek to rescue as you're running out? Probably photos, if, that, if I didn't have a digital form of them. We are shifting now to travel. What is the best vacation you've ever taken? Where was, where did you go? The best vacation I've ever taken? Oh, there are, there are a bunch. Um, I will tell you that um, although it may not sound extremely exotic, um, my wife and kids and I love to go to the Eastern shore we love to go to the Eastern Shore. Uh, um, so oh, I know, oh. I know, I know. So, <laughs> so we got we got married in St. Michael's. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, we got married in St. Michael's. I think we're looking for some votes on the Eastern Shore. <laughs> so I'm not trying to. Um, right. Not trying to. So I will tell you that that um, that I, I do love. I also um, I'll give you I'll give you another example. Okay. Too, which is um, so I went to graduate school in the UK. Um, and London is this incredible city. Um, mm -hmm. It's an incredible city in part because it's sort of a rich city of neighborhoods like Baltimore. Um, like Rockville. You know, yeah, yeah, Rockville. So it's a, it's a rich city of neighborhoods that, that is this melting pot of folks from everywhere who sort of come together in this largely very positive way. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I loved living there and I, you know, we love going there too. That's great. What is a place that you've discovered in Maryland, maybe on the campaign trail that you really have uh, fallen in love with? Oh, so that is hard because I have, um, I grew up in Montgomery County. I lived in Baltimore City pretty much my whole adult life. You know, uh, we got married, I got married on the Eastern Shore. You know, I've vacation in Deep Creek Lake more times than I can count. Oh my. I, okay. I will tell you You've that covered it all. I've covered it all. Um, all right. but, but I will tell you a part of the state that I have spent a little bit of time in, but probably not quite as much time as more as I have more recently, is sort of the northern edge of the state. I was um, just going to say Cecil County, Harford so, County, somewhere. So exactly. Um, and Kent. You know, and I, I love it. So yeah. So and, you know, but I love you know, I know that everyone says sort of Maryland is, is you know, American miniature, right. um, but it is so true. true. And, you know, and there's so many incredible neighborhoods and parts of the state, so. Yep. Do you have a favorite bar or restaurant in Maryland? Favorite bar or restaurant in Maryland? Um, I'm the first place that's, that's going to come to mind is actually somewhere I went earlier this week, which is um, there is an amazing bar near my house in Baltimore called Bluebird. Called? Bluebird. Um, and it is, it's filled with artists. Um, mm -hmm. And by artists, what I mean is folks who feel such passion for their craft in making cocktails um, that it's an art for them. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the things that I love about Maryland and Baltimore as, you know, as part of Maryland, that it's filled with folks with such passion for their craft um, that they're artists at what they do. And so Bluebird fully qualifies as that. I will have to check that out sometime. I can't yeah. recommend it highly enough. All right. So if neither COVID nor money were an object, where would you want to travel in the world? Where would I want to travel in the world? Um, so this is going to... 
I'm not sure if this is going to answer your question, but um, I love the water. Um, my wife loves the water. My kids love the water. And um, one of the things we did last summer was we rented a sailboat and we bopped around towns a lot up and down the Chesapeake for two weeks. Nice. Um, and I would do that again in a second. We would all do that again in a second. It was fabulous. That's great. <laughs> Last question in this category. Uh -huh. what, is, what is something you always bring with you when you travel? What do I always bring with me when I travel? Um, so before I did this, I traveled a lot for work because I had companies, you know, my first company has operations in 42 states. Um, and I'd love to say I'd bring all my clothes, but I would regularly forget a piece of clothing. Hmm. A piece of clothing, you'd be like, how exactly did you forget that? <laughs> and I would call my wife, Amy, and I'd be like, I forgot socks. Or I socks forgot are always what I forget to bring. Uh, right. Oh, you did. See, socks. Totally, I always oh, forget socks all the time. I, the number of times I forgot a belt, I always forget a belt. Like, and she'd be like, how could you forget these things? I forget my keys probably a third of the time. Oh, no. Uh, you know, one piece that I frankly didn't forget, because again, I do have two teenage kids, is my phone. Is Wait, your? My phone. Your and you'd phone. say, right. the phone because of work? No, right. not actually because of work. The phone because, you know, the reality is that with teenagers, um, sometimes they will ignore you completely. But those few moments when they will actually engage with you, you want to drop everything else you are doing to pay attention to them. Absolutely. Right. There you so. go. So the next category, Mike, is social media. Uh -huh. What percentage of your Facebook posts and tweets do you write yourself? So I write, you mean the political ones? Or are you talking just in general? In general, whatever you, however you want to answer it. So um, I did not actually tweet at all before this. Okay. Um, and I actually almost never posted on social media. And so this has been a learning curve for me. Yeah. And so I write them. Um, I generally am not the one who is physically posting them. You write them on a piece of paper. <laughs> I will send them in an email. Um, <laughs> or an text, and then someone will so. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, well, I, this may be a ridiculous question for you then. Uh, which is your favorite social media platform and why? So maybe none of the above. I don't know. Yeah. So, so I will tell you, and this is probably, again, I, I, I hope this doesn't sound bad, but I actually have a lot of concerns about social media, okay. um, you know, as a platform. And I know that it's an important way to communicate, um, you know, but, but I also think that, um, again, having been in and around tech for a long time, some of the ways that social media platforms have developed um, creates actual addictions and really doesn't always make us happier. All right. We are getting low on time and I still have two more pages. So why are you a Democrat? Why am I a Democrat? Um, so I am a Democrat because I think the values of the Democratic Party are all about sort of how do we enable security for everyone? Okay. And um, so like, move, we're moving on. <laughs> I'm moving on. This was the politics uh, category. Okay. okay, we can do this one fast. When did you first think about running for office? Mm, last year. Okay. Um, have you ever been disappointed um, or disillusioned by the Democratic Party or by a, or by a Democratic leader? Um, I mean, I think like all of us, you know, I've been disappointed at times by, you know, from certain leaders and probably the primary reason that I would be, you know, have been disappointed is, you know, someone displaying what strikes me as a lack of courage. Okay. Uh, on a scale of one to a hundred, one being the very most conservative right wing, a hundred being the very most liberal left wing, what number would you say reflects your political ideology? I'm not sure I can answer the question. I'm okay. sorry. <laughs> okay. Who is a shiro or a hero of yours, living or dead? Shiro or hero, living or dead? Um, my wife. Nice. Okay. You want to say why? Yes. Um, she is like a rock. She is the most grounded person. And I think without her, I would spin away. Um, and so. Yay, Amy. Okay. <laughs> Yay, Amy. <laughs> um, you've already talked about the Baltimore Museum for the Arts. Um, museum 
Museum of Art. Museum of Art, sorry. Um, I was gonna offer, um, do you wanna make a pitch for a nonprofit that you support personally? And maybe BMA is already it, but if you wanna say something else. Oh, there are so many of them. Um, I actually, um, if it's okay, I'm, I'm gonna give you a pitch for a nonprofit that I only met more recently. Um, Super fast. Uh, vehicles for Change. Oh, um, I, like that. I know yeah. them. Okay. Yeah. Uh, windfall of federal money coming in. You're the only decision maker. Where would you send it? Uh, economic support and training for folks to be able to move into middle income jobs. Cool. Um, Mike Rosenbaum, what is your secret superpower? What is a skill or talent that you have that most folks can't do? Um, I can. I'm very good at questioning assumptions that we all don't even realize we have. Cool. Um, any regrets in your life? Any regrets in my life? Um, this is gonna sound like lack of self-knowledge, but I actually, I'm not sure I can think of any at this moment. I feel incredibly happy. That's awesome, okay. And we're kind of out of time, but super fast. Is there anything we didn't cover that you wanna share briefly? Um, just that I'm really grateful to be talking to you and you know, for many reasons, one of which obviously I've known who you are forever. And I've only gotten to meet you more recently. And you know, since I grew up in Montgomery County and my mom was involved in Montgomery County politics in the late seventies and early eighties. And I was involved in the late nineties, um, you know, getting to know you a little bit, you know, over these last couple of months has been awesome. So thank you for taking the time to do this. That's very generous. Thank you. It's been really fun to kibitz with you, Mike Rosenbaum. Uh, Wishing you all the best personally and professionally and uh, look forward to seeing you before too long on the campaign trail. Take care. See you soon. Thank you. Bye.